Okay, so let's analyze this resistivity data then. This is my spreadsheet. I've got a couple of tables in there. The green cells here are where I'll be inputting the values from the experiment. And then we'll get a graph plotted here, length versus resistance. And we'll also analyze that. So first thing to do is uh, I'll be putting in the diameter readings for the wire. I've got two diameter readings here. This cell here calculates the area in square meters. So I'm going to put those in there. That first reading was 0.27 and the second one was 0.28. You can see the area calculation automatically updating as I put those values in. So the, let's have a look at the formula there. So we've got pi times a power function here. The average of these, so I'm taking the average of these, dividing those by a thousand. That's my millimeter to meter conversion. Then uh, comma two, so the first argument for the power formula is the average of these divided by a thousand, and the second argument is two, so I'm squaring that. So this is pi times d squared divided by four. So pi d squared over four gives me the area of a circle of that diameter. So that's the area calculation there. And you can see I've got a value of 5.94 times 10 to the power of minus eight meters squared. The next table here is for my voltage and current readings. I've already pre-populated the length in centimeters here. So that's on the left. I've got one column for the first readings of voltage, another column for the second. Then I've got two for readings one and two of the current in amperes. Let's put those in and then I'll talk about what's happening in these two columns here. So my voltage readings were 2.06, 2.06. Everything is to two decimal places for both of these, seeing as that was the precision of the multimeters. As you can see, I've preset the, the um, spreadsheet so that it gives even a one SF value to two decimal places still. Okay, and the second set was 1.22, 0.96, 0.85, 0.88, 0.6 again. Okay, so these are my raw values here. Length, voltage, current. The first column here that's doing some calculations is simply dividing this by 100 to convert those into meters, the lengths. So that formula, if I bring that up, is just cell A3 divided by 100 and that's replicated down there, so be A4, A5, and so on. And then the resistance column here. So this is V divided by I, the voltage over the current, but I've got two readings for both of those. So what I've done is calculated the average of those. So I have average of these two values divided by the average of these two values here. And then that's just fill down that formula. So as I go down here, it's doing exactly the same thing for those different sets of data. So that's how length and resistance are calculated. And these are the two quantities that I wanna put into my graph here. So as I was inputting the data, you would have seen the data plots appear on the graph and the trend line automatically update as well. So the data looks pretty good. There's, they're all, on or very close to the line, so it's a nice straight set of data. But there is a y-intercept, a non-zero y-intercept, so there is perhaps some systematic error that has come into my experiment offsetting the line from passing directly through the origin. Okay, how do I analyze this graph then? Well, I need the equation for the relates to this line and then I'm going to use the gradient value. This is the equation of this line here, y equals mx plus c, so I have the gradient value there in addition to the y-intercept. Now the equation that 
relates to this data set is R equals resistivity divided by A so multiplied by L. So that's the resistivity equation rearranged to make R the subject. R being the subject is important because resistance is on the y-axis and I need L over on the right hand side of the equation because L length is the x value. So I've also grouped the resistivity divided by area ratio in an equation here and that's just so that we can visually see these, this whole term here is multiplied by L and therefore this is equal to the gradient of the line that I actually get from my data. So the gradient will be equal to the resistivity divided by the area. So what I'm going to do is going to look at the equation from a trend line and I'm going to write that gradient value down in this table down here. So let's write that down. It's 8.9048. And you'll see it automatically calculates the resistivity value for me here. So all I've done here is if this term here, resistivity divided by A, is equal to the gradient, then resistivity will be equal to the gradient multiplied by A when I rearrange that. So that's what I've done. I've multiplied the gradient by the area that I calculated, the cross-sectional area of the wire. That's that calculation there. And the value that I'm getting is 5.29 times 10 to the minus 7. Probably should reduce the significant figures on that because if we look at my data, I have current values here that are going to only 2SF. So you can increase the number of significant figures in your final value by one, but ideally you want to stick with the minimum of the raw data. So anyway, 5.3 times 10 to the minus seven. And this last data entry point here is the data book value. Now, as I said in the experiment, this metal wire was from, made of a metal called Constantan. So I looked up on the hyperphysics resistivity table, a data book value for Constantan, which is shown here. 49 times 10 to the minus 8, which is 4.9 times 10 to the minus 7. So if I flick back here, 4.9 times 10 to the minus 7, so my data book value. And this last cell here does a percentage difference calculation, which is a standard calculation. So I'm just taking the absolute value of the difference of these two and then dividing by the data book value. So this, this is the accurate value, and therefore we take that as 100%. So I'm dividing those by that, and I've formatted this cell to show a percentage all automatically. So it's just under 8% percentage difference. Okay, so that's how I've analysed my data using this spreadsheet. Hope that's helpful for you to see another spreadsheet and how that works. And then also this little bit of analysis at the end using the graph and the equation.